15 amp breakers, and 20 amp circuits to 20 amp breakers. For every circuit you move to the transfer switch, you must connect the white neutral wire in the distribution panel. You'll need to install a double pole breaker in the distribution panel to protect the transfer switch. The required amp rating of the breaker depends on which transfer switch you're using, so refer to the installation guide before purchasing the breaker. Install the breaker in two adjacent empty slots, one above the other, in the main panel. It might be necessary to reposition some of the remaining breakers in order to free up two adjacent slots. If you're not completely comfortable with how to do this, contact a licensed electrician. To install the breaker, connect the red and black power leads and snap the breaker into place. Connect the white wire to the neutral bar. Connect the green wire to the large lug on the ground terminal block. Finally, close the main breaker and check to make certain that normal utility voltage at the transfer switch is correct. Refer to NFPA 70E for the safety equipment required when working inside a live transfer switch. If your generator did not come with a battery, you'll need to purchase one. A list of recommended batteries is included in the owner's manual. When installing the battery, it's important to follow all of the procedures and safety precautions detailed in the installation guide. Now it's time to conduct some operational tests to make sure everything is working properly. First, open the generator's main circuit breaker and put the mode switch in the OFF position. Shut off utility power at the distribution panel and open all of the emergency circuit breakers in the transfer switch. Locate the transfer handle and insert the metal end into the slot in the main contactor assembly. Pull the handle down to move the main contacts to the standby power or generator position. Never operate the transfer switch manually when loads are connected. Put the generator's mode switch in manual and wait for the engine to start. Allow the engine to warm up, then switch the generator's main circuit breaker to the on position. The generator is now supplying electricity to the transfer switch but is not carrying any load. Using a multimeter, check to be sure that voltage and frequency from the generator is correct. If line-to-line -line voltage is not 240, refer to the installation guide for the proper adjustment procedure. If neutral-to-line voltage is not 120, check the neutral connection between the generator and the transfer switch. Switch the generator's main breaker off and put the mode switch in the off position to shut down the generator. Next, make sure the double pole circuit breaker you installed in the main panel is in the off position. Use the transfer handle to move the main contacts in the transfer switch to the up or utility position. Now close the double pole breaker in the distribution panel by switching it to on. Next, switch the generator's main breaker to the on position and put the mode switch in auto. Open the main breaker in the distribution panel to shut off utility power. The generator should start and, after the appropriate delay, transfer power to the generator. Close the main service breaker and make sure that power transfers back to the utility. After the generator has shut down, open the main breaker again to shut off the utility. When the generator is running and is supplying power to the transfer switch, close the breakers in the transfer switch one at a time until the generator has accepted the entire load. With the generator carrying the entire emergency load, recheck gas pressure to verify that it's at the same level it was before you started the generator. Close the main breaker. After a few seconds, the transfer switch will restore utility power. 
the generator will continue to run to allow the engine to cool down, then shut itself off. Now unhook the gas meter and reinstall the port plug on the regulator. If everything worked properly, the system is now ready for automatic operation. Shut off utility power one last time. The generator should start. And after the appropriate delay, the entire load should transfer to the generator. Close the main breaker and make sure the transfer switch restores utility power to the home. Allow the generator to cool down and shut itself off. Now you need to make sure the automatic exercise function is working properly. With the mode switch in auto, press the exerciser switch and hold it down for at least 10 seconds. Then release. The generator should start automatically within a few seconds. The generator will run for about 12 minutes and then shut itself down. Once set, the unit will exercise each week at the same time, so don't forget to show the owner how to set this function on the day and time he wants the unit to exercise. If the battery is ever disconnected for any reason, the exercise time will have to be reset. If your generator is equipped with the low speed exercise feature, it was enabled at the factory and no adjustment is needed. As you can see, this installation is fairly simple. Just follow all of the instructions that come with the generator, observe all safety procedures, applicable codes and regulations, and you shouldn't have any problems.